Hi everyone, my name is Tal, and this is Due Diligence. Now, I know we've all got our talking points, but I want you to struggle to be as sincere with yourself as you can right now. Doesn't it bother you a little bit that when we come to talk about the origins of the universe, and if there's a multiverse, the origin of that too, that the only real options you've got besides God is a past infinite universe, which is impossible, or the universe coming to exist uncaused out of nothing, or something far less clear than even those. It seems that for any worldview that includes atheism, there's a massive blind spot when it comes to the origin of the universe. And all the attempts to try and circumvent that problem seem desperate, and at least far less likely than theism. My question is simply this, when you step away from the debate mode, doesn't this issue destabilize you a little bit? First of all, Braxton, when you ask us to struggle to be as sincere with ourselves as we can be, you're implying that normally we're not, and that being sincere takes a lot of effort from us. When you talk of debate mode and talking points, you're basically saying that our answers don't normally reflect what we think, just what we think could help us make our case. Now, I don't suppose I need to tell you what they say about he who smelled it, right? And dude, the question itself, this thing that you brought up really doesn't destabilize me, not in the slightest. I'm completely okay with the fact that I don't know how existence came to be. I don't actually think that anyone can know that currently, and I don't even know if it's something that could ever be known. To me, it doesn't sound impossible that no living creature will ever know where all of this came from. And that doesn't rattle me at all. If you really don't see how ridiculous this question sounds, then let's imagine together. We're in ancient Greece, standing in the Agora. We see a theist approaching an atheist and saying, I want you to struggle to be as sincere with yourself as you can be. Doesn't it bother you a little bit that when we come to talk about where lightning comes from, that the only real options you got besides Zeus are Thor, which is Norse, or Uko, or something far less clear than even those? Doesn't this issue destabilize you a little bit? Look, Brexton, I understand that you'd feel more at ease if you knew where everything came from. But it strikes me that what should matter most is the truth and not what we might prefer that the truth were. You say that all we can offer is a past infinite universe or uncaused popping into existence or something less clear. You say that atheism has a blind spot when it comes to the origins of the universe and that we make attempts to circumvent that problem which seem desperate. Now Brexton, when an atheist dares to talk about faith in the colloquial sense, you call that disingenuous because they have been corrected on this. Aren't you doing exactly what you're claiming we do? I mean, surely you've heard atheists answer questions on this topic with a resounding, I don't know, haven't you? I'm not convinced that we know enough to conclude what the origin of the universe is. Is it your position that it is epistemically possible, epistemically possible, that universe could have come to exist uncaused out of nothing? I don't know. Do you believe the universe had a beginning? I'll say that. I have no idea. Okay. Do you think it's epistemically possible that the universe came to exist uncaused out of nothing? And I, don't, I, I don't know. But do you believe... Okay, so you either have the universe's past eternal or it's not. Is your answer just, I don't know? Correct. How could it possibly be that the universe could be infinite into the past? I don't know. Okay, so then it's not past eternal. I, I never said it was past eternal. You said you didn't know. Correct. I don't know. if The difference between me and many uh, apologists is that I'm not willing to pretend that I know just because I got stumped by a question. This is one of the, the frustrating things is that, you know, I, I, I constantly, if I, if I honestly don't know something, I say I don't know, and then people act as if it's absurd. If the local presentation of the universe had to have some cause, then the only thing that I can, that I can know about that is that uh, it seems to be the case that it couldn't have been our universe that caused itself. So there must be something else. Yeah. What that something else is or needs to be, I have no idea. To say that we have a blind spot, which is a problem for us that we try to circumvent, when you know that many of us, if not most, just give this response is a bit disingenuous, isn't it? If anything, claiming to know something that is unknowable is what really seems desperate to me. And that, frankly, is what every first cause argument I've ever heard sounded like. They all rely, in one way or another, on the idea that past infinite existence is impossible, 
that timeless immaterial existence is possible, and on thinking that we have any kind of access to knowing what causality would look like in that timeless immaterial existence. These are three very bold assertions that I just don't get how anyone can take seriously. Yes, there are many examples of paradoxes relating to the idea of a past infinite, but if a paradox was a good enough way to conclude that something really is impossible, I think it's the theist side that would take the brunt of the hit. At best, a paradox tells us that there's something we just don't understand. And even if we accept that a past infinite really is impossible, this still doesn't make timeless immaterial existence possible. And even if it did, how could you think that you know anything about what causality would look like in these circumstances? Our entire understanding of everything is based on our experiences and observations, all of which occur in a reality that's based on time and matter. Do you really feel that saying that I don't know something is more desperate than claiming that you know not only that existence without time and matter is possible, but also how causality would work in such conditions? To see more of my videos, please subscribe to my channel and ring the notification bell. Thank you all very much for watching, and remember, our world is complex, but it doesn't have to be complicated. Have a good one.